Welcome back. All right. I will talk about the Vegas Golden Knights today. So, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights currently sitting at 42, 25, and 8. And they went through a rough patch there. They lost six out of nine games. They were very much a team that looked like they could end up missing the playoffs. Uh, but they have charged recently. So we're going to talk about that. Now, last season, they were 51, 22, and 9. As my hat states, they won the Stanley Cup. I have two Stanley Cup winning hats for the, the Vegas Golden Knights, I do believe. Uh, they were first in the Pacific in points with 111 points. And of course, Vegas is an interesting team to me because at the time this channel was in its relative infancy, uh, that was their expansion year. And it was the year they were misfits and they made it all the way to the final. And then the question was, how do they follow it up? Well, eventually, they win the Stanley Cup. That's how you follow it up. Now, currently, they're on pace for a 100-plus point season. And the question then becomes, so are they going to finish third, second? Could they still finish first? Mathematically, they're still alive to move up in the standings. I, I don't think it's going to necessarily matter. Uh, Vegas is good at home and on the road. And this run, since they lost six out of nine, kind of shows that. So, starts off with a win at home against Seattle, 3-1. to one. Now, that was tied 1-1 in the third. Uh, Logan Thompson, 21 saves on 22 shots. So yes, it's Seattle, but really well played game by Vegas there. Now, at home they win then over Columbus 4-2. They did trail. They trailed 1-0 after the first period. Uh, Aiden Hill ended up saving 12 out of 13. He left with an injury, and Logan Thompson in relief saved 8 out of 9. And since then, it's basically been Thompson's net. Uh, away from home, they have an overtime win 2-1 uh, against St. Louis. They led that one 1-0 one after the second. And again, Logan Thompson, 31 saves on 32 shots. Uh, really good run that he's been on. Then away from home, they have an overtime loss against the Nashville Predators 5-4. That one they led 4-1 after the second. But Nashville is uh, still in the midst of that 18-game point streak. And towards the end of that 18-game point streak, Nashville maybe a little lucky. Sure, we can say that. Uh, they might have been lucky, too, that it wasn't Logan Thompson and Nett. Patera saves 30 out of 35. I am not saying Patera was bad, just Thompson's been kind of fantastic. And then as this road trip continued, they have a win in Winnipeg, 4-1. to That one was tied 1-1 after 2, and Winnipeg fans will tell you, the Jets played really well, just didn't end up winning the game, and Thompson's a big part of the reason why. 39 saves on 40 shots. Uh, then they go to Minnesota, overtime win, 2-1. to Minnesota desperate for points here. They trailed 1-0 after the second, and you have to watch Vegas when they're behind in a game in the third period. They are very dangerous. Uh, Thompson saved 32 out of 33 there. Uh, then last night at home, they beat Vancouver 6-3. They were up 4-1 after, after the first period. I thought Vancouver played well after the first, but you can't discount the first period. It's 20 minutes of the game. It's a third of the game, and Vegas owned that. Uh, Thompson ends up saving 27 out of 30 in that one. So that's about as close to a rough number, like below 900, that he gets is 900. Uh, outside of that, every time he's good. Now he saves 8 out of 9 in this win here, but he only faced 9 shots. So not really much point in making, making uh, pointing that one out a whole lot. Uh, but at any rate, their upcoming schedule, well, tomorrow they're in, they're in Arizona. Uh, so the Coyotes are playing tonight at home, or no, on Friday. They're in Arizona tonight. Arizona's at home against Vancouver. Uh, so, yeah, that should be an interesting one in Arizona. Then on Monday, and this is a road game as well, they're in Vancouver. So Vancouver should be looking for some measure of revenge after last night's game. And don't count out Vancouver's ability to bounce back from what was a really rough game there. Uh, then also on that road trip, they're in Edmonton on Wednesday. So they, they have the ability here to decide who finishes where and also whether or not they move up in the standings before the season's done with games directly against Vancouver and Edmonton, two of the teams that they're chasing uh, in the Pacific Division. They come back home. It's a four-game homestand to finish things out. The only team above the playoff line they play is Colorado. It's Minnesota on the Friday, so a week after that game against Arizona. Then on the Sunday, they're against Colorado. That should be fantastic. That could be a preview of the first round or the, the conference final of the playoffs. Uh, then they play Chicago. Do not take Chicago lightly. Chicago's got a good record over the last month or so. And then they finish out their season on that Thursday at home against Anaheim. So that's a winnable game right there. So I would say of their remaining seven games, Arizona's winnable, Minnesota, Chicago, Anaheim, even if they don't beat Vancouver, Edmonton, and uh, the, the Colorado Avalanche, they still rack up four more wins. 
and uh, that would that would definitely keep them in the hunt for maybe for second place again depending on what Edmonton Vancouver do from here um, and that's that's just saying hey if they win the games they should and they lose the games that are, are, are in the other region of maybe they win maybe they don't things look pretty good for them now one thing that stands out is people will talk about well hey you know Mark Stone they're cheating they're cheating I've said it before, I'll say it again here. If I was going to try to cheat a system in order to add players, well, A, I probably wouldn't take my best two-way forward out because this game has definitely missed Mark Stone. Now, they've picked it up recently, but initially when Stone got hurt, they were in trouble, and that's why at the trade deadline they were able to go out and get other players. Now, there's some debate about whether or not Stone's going to come back for the playoffs in the first round. There's the chance he may not. And yes, in the next, next CBA, maybe they'll make it so that if if your team has to be cap compliant at the end of the year, they have to be cap compliant in the playoffs. I'd be fine with that, honestly. But I'm, I'm not going to complain about a team using a loophole that exists. The GMs say, yeah, it's a loophole that exists, and we're kind of fine with it. Because other GMs have said we would do the exact same thing in their position. So you have Carrier, who's been on and off uh, the, the injured list throughout the season, it seems. Aiden Hill. Uh, who, when he's been playing, has looked like he's not the Aiden Hill of earlier in the season, and I think he was trying to play through an injury. Uh, and you've got Hurdle, who has yet to make his debut with this team, on top of Mark Stone, who may return later. Uh, Hurdle, I will be very interested to see where he slots in, who he plays with, and I've said this before, uh, you never know how it's going to turn out. Sometimes you get a guy, and it's great, and sometimes it's Thomas Tatar, who just did not fit with the Vegas Golden Knights, and very quickly it became obvious... He had to go. And I, I salute Vegas for being able to pivot and, and, and make a trade happen so that that didn't get more uncomfortable than it was. We'll see how it works with Hurdle. Maybe he hits the ground running and everything's great. I know hitting the ground running is a phrase that Mythbusters disproved. It's still a phrase we use. It's just like bull in a china shop. I don't really say it because I remember the Mythbusters where the bull was very, very carefully making its way between two rows of china. Didn't disturb a dish. Anyways, uh, the, th the things I mentioned in videos, right? Nothing to do with Vegas, although I think they filmed that in the desert. So very likely it was either filmed in Nevada or California. Maybe Arizona. Sure, why not? So Eichel's been the leading scorer for this team. And I, I think that Eichel has really shown that he is still a superstar in this league and he can carry a team. Five goals, two assists, and seven games for Eichel. For Marcia so three goals, four assists. So both of them with a point per game number and Carlson as well at two goals, five assists, and Mantha at a goal and six assists. One thing that's going to make Vegas very difficult come playoff time, no matter who is active and no matter who isn't, this team has depth. They have depth. All four lines can score. Uh, all three pairings on the blue line are solid. And again, as long as Logan Thompson can keep this up, because of course, unless Aiden Hill comes back and he's 100%, you're looking at a situation where if Thompson struggles, you have to go to Patera, which is not an ideal situation to be in. Uh, Barbashev, four goals, two assists during this run in seven games. Chandler Stevenson, who's a UFA this summer, a goal and four assists for him. Be interested to see how much Stevenson and Marcia so get as free agents this summer and whether one, the other, or both end up staying with Vegas. Uh, Theodore, a goal and three assists, four points in seven games during this run. Uh, Dorofiev, three goals in seven games. I've talked a lot about Dorofiev and how I think he has a lot of offensive potential. And I think he's shown that this year. So I think he's earned the right to be one of the regulars next season to play a full 82 games. Brett Howden, two goals and an assist. White Cloud's only played four games during this run. Three assists for him. McNabb, three assists as well in all seven games he's played. Kolasar, goal and an assist. Kolasar is a better player than I think he gets credit for, though. He's a pretty, pretty... Kolasar plays a very similar role there as to what Dakota Joshua has played in Vancouver. Just not as many goals for Kolasar. But the talent's there. The effort's there. Hannafin, a goal and an assist. I still think Hannafin's getting his feet wet with Vegas and figuring out exactly where he fits in. I would expect the offense picks up as he gets more and more comfortable with his teammates. Uh, Amadio has a goal in the seven games. Cotter's played four games. He has an assist. He may end up being the extra guy when Hurdle comes into the lineup. Uh, Petrangelo's only played two games during this run and one assist. So this is a team that's been dealing with a lot of big names out of the lineup, and it really, it's hurt them at points, but they have the depth to make up for it. Uh, Martinez has only played three games during this run, one assist for him during that time. Haig, seven games, no points. Carrier, three games, no points. And Ben Hutton, five games, no points for Hutton during this seven-game run. 
Thompson's 5 and 0 with a 952 save percentage during this run. So Logan Thompson has really emerged as the guy in Vegas again. Remember he was an all-star last season. He wasn't the starter going into the playoffs because he was hurt. So they had Brassois as the starter. Then Brassois got hurt. Then they go to Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill is the number three goaltender at this time last year. And then everything changes, right? So with Thompson, I think he's shown he can be the starter. And he, there's no reason to think that in the playoffs he won't play well. Aiden Hill, the one win in the game that he played, 923 save percentage. Patera, 0-0-1-1, 857 save percentage. Just that one game against Nashville, which again, Nashville was red hot at the time. So not a huge surprise that they would lose that one. Just the way they lost that one, I think, was a bit of a surprise. But that's the only blemish. That's the only blemish in this run. So they're not winning their games by a lot, but it feels like that game against Vancouver last night, that was a bit of a statement game. And now the rest of their schedule, not that difficult. And I, I do feel like with the Vegas Golden Knights, the question then becomes, can they repeat as Stanley Cup champions? My answer to that is they can. Uh, the odds are not in their favor. It's rare for a team to to repeat as champs. Even though we've had Pittsburgh in 2016 and 2017 and Tampa in 2020 and 2021, we've seen one win for Colorado. We've seen one win for Vegas here. They might win back-to-back. -back. We don't know. Uh, St. Louis won in 2019. Washington won in 2018. And then you go back and Chicago won their last one of the three in 2015. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, the idea of winning back-to-backs, it's its that whole romanticized idea of trying to build a dynasty. Vegas is trying to do that. It's an unusual way they're doing it. Vegas has made it clear that it's, it's a hired gun kind of th situation. And this summer, I do expect there to be big changes because Vegas does that. They're not shy about big changes. So to make room for Hurdle's contract, who knows who's going to go? Let me know your your thoughts in the comment section below. I almost said your picks as if it was a preview video. But who do you think stays? Who do you think goes at the end of the season? And how dangerous is Vegas going to be come playoff time? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.